see if some of you can uh, type in the chat window if the reception is okay. Okay. Oh yeah, messages are coming in. Uh, good. Um, good evening or good afternoon, good morning, wherever you uh, are located, depending on where you are located uh, at the moment. Um, welcome to this uh, short introduction on uh, uh, motorsport performance engineering webinars I'm planning to do in the next couple of weeks. Um, just to, before we go into it, I'll, I'll, I'll shortly introduce myself. Um, my name is Jorge Segers, as you know. Um, I'm working since uh, 1998, already quite quite a couple of years uh, in motor racing as a race engineer, uh, performance engineer for different uh, different teams. Um, over the last 20 years, I've been mainly uh, active in GT racing. Uh, I've done some touring car racing uh, and prototype racing. Um, just a very small part of single seaters uh, many years ago. Um, and most of you probably know me from the book that SAE published in 2008, uh, Analysis Techniques for Race Car Data Acquisition. Um, after this book was, was published, I started with uh, organizing uh, classroom seminars about this uh, subject and uh, this grew over the years. Um, I've uh, developed different courses. Uh, Basically, the, the first one was the data acquisition course um, that already runs since uh, I think the first time was in 2009 or 2010. Uh, and since then, this, this course has been organized uh, a couple of times every, every year. I, 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 um, I plan these most of the times in the off season, in the winter, uh, when, when the racing season is finished. Um, over the years, there, there have been some variations on the course. Um, there was a motorsports engineering course, which was uh, initially developed for Porsche in Brazil uh, in 2012, 2013 for the first time. Um, and uh, we, I did a, a five-day course uh, on motorsport performance engineering uh, only a couple of months ago here in Belgium, uh, which was a new concept, which was basically a, a mix of the data acquisition and the motorsport engineering uh, course. Um, since then, yeah, the world has changed quite a bit, uh, and we find ourselves now in a pretty strange situations where, situation where uh, most of the racing um, uh, is cancelled, or all of the racing is cancelled, actually. Um, so I guess most of you, like me, are at the moment at home um, and waiting anxiously to get uh, the green flag uh, again, uh, which I hope will not take too long. Uh, but uh, yeah, at the moment, uh, the prospects are not looking that, that bright yet. Um, I had over the years uh, already a lot of requests to to offer this kind of course uh, on an online platform. Um, and to be honest, I always kept these requests a little bit at a distance because um, I like the the classroom format because it's uh, it's first of all it's more more interactive. Um, you have the people that you are ex explaining um, your stuff to is they are right in front of you, so you can see from the uh, from their faces if it's uh, being uh, processed or not, or not. This is not the case uh, in a webinar format, um, and it's uh, I like the the interactivity and I like the the, the networking aspect of the classroom seminars. Um, which uh, here in the webinar format, you have a, a chat window and I guess you can uh, communicate to each other uh, over the chat tool. Um, but yeah, that's basically basically it. Um, now, yeah, uh, with this uh, Corona crisis, um, uh, I got again, a lot of requests to, to do this on an online platform. So I 
I, I said, okay, let's let's have a go. Um, and yeah, you are looking at the, the introduction to uh, a five uh, module webinar I've uh, I've been working on in the last couple of weeks. Um, and uh, today we are going to briefly go over what the contents of these uh, modules will be, uh, how you register for them, and what you will uh, be able to get out of this uh, uh, out of these courses. Um, before we jump into the presentation, just a couple of um, practical uh, items. So you have a chat window on the right hand side of your screen where you can uh, make comments. If there are any technical problems, um, because for, for, for me personally, this is a, like a, a shakedown. Uh, I've, I'm new to, to webinar presentations, so uh, I've uh, registered for this click meeting uh, uh, platform last week, actually. Uh, I've been testing it uh, over the last couple of days, but uh, yeah, we now have a quite big group of people which are connected to the, to the webinar. Um, so if there are any technical problems, uh, please provide some feedback in the, in the chat window so I can uh, uh, maybe, if there's an issue, we can try to, to resolve it now live. But uh, if not, at least uh, I know uh, which points to, to improve for when we go, when we go live uh, with the serious stuff. Um, also in this chat window, uh, if, you, if during the presentation you have a question, please uh, ask it in the chat window. And there's an icon uh, on the right-hand side, uh, a question mark. If you click this icon, um, your comment below will be marked as a question and it will be put in a list, which makes it a lot easier for me to, to, um, to go over the questions later on. Uh, I will um, cover any questions at the end of the presentation. Um, if there are too many questions uh, or there are questions which I cannot uh, answer immediately, I will um, provide you with an email afterwards where these, uh, these questions will be answered then. Um, then also on the right hand side, uh, on the right top of your screen, you have a, um, a menu item which says uh, event board. If you click on this, uh, there's a tab which uh, says um, shared files. Uh, under this tab, you can find the PDF version of this presentation. So you can download it from, uh, from there. Um, there's also a document with uh, a checklist uh, when you have any technical issues. Um, uh, you, uh, um, you can uh, uh, check what to do over there. So I have already a question, so to repeat where it is. So on the right top of your screen, uh, you have an, uh, a menu item, event board. If you click on this, there's a window that opens and then you have on the right hand side, right top side, there's a, a tab which is called shared files. If you click on that, there are two PDF files on this, uh, on this window. Um, so this is also how it will work with the, with, uh, the webinars. Uh, you will be provided with a, a complete presentation. And if there are any other files which, uh, which are important for the, um, for the examples uh, that we are going to go over, they will be uh, downloadable there. Um, for, yeah, you are all here live uh, present. Um, for the people that are not uh, attending this webinar live, um, it's being recorded. So after this uh, webinar, um, it will be posted online. Uh, you will all get a link uh, to this, uh, to the presentation. So if you want to look at it again, uh, for this one, I don't think it's that important, but afterwards for the, for the, the, the real webinars, um, you can rewatch the whole presentations uh, uh, as many times as you want. Um, so, What's the idea? So um, I've collected basically uh, five of actually four different topics uh, from the classroom seminars that I that I'm doing um, to cover during uh, these webinars. Um, and what is important to understand is that you don't need to follow all five of them. Uh, you can cherry pick 
the ones that you want. If it's only one you want, or you want to follow all five, you all options are open. Um, so uh, they are standalone. So you can choose basically the subjects that you are that you are interested in. Um, like I said, the topics are taken from the classroom courses, but um, uh, I've seen in the uh, attendees list that there are a lot of people uh, following this webinar that already attended a, a classroom and actually attended more than one uh, classroom uh, seminar. And uh, they will know that I try to uh, not give the same presentation every time again. So I try to put some new things in uh, into each uh, seminar. I mean, I'm planning to do the same thing with these webinars. So um, the topics uh, you will recognize from the classroom courses, but uh, that does not mean that it will be a copy paste presentation of what you got in the classroom uh, uh, seminar. So there will be some new stuff uh, as well over there. Um, Starting on the 6th of May, the calendar will, will follow at the end of the presentation, but the first one will be held at uh, Wednesday, the 6th of May. Uh, and from that moment onwards, I will uh, present one module weekly. So every uh, Wednesday evening at seven o'clock European time, um, I will uh, present uh, one of the modules. Uh, and each module will basically consist of a presentation of more or less two hours, depending on uh, the amount of information to be presented, but count on two to two and a half hours maximum, followed by a Q&A session where uh, I will try to answer any questions which are, which are still open after the presentation. Um, like I said before, the questions can be asked through the chat uh, tool in the webinar platform. Uh, and if there are any questions which are not being uh, answered during the webinar, I will do it later on to, uh, with, a, uh, with an email. Um, and there again, if it's not possible to be uh, present live at the webinar, don't worry. Uh, after the webinar session is finished, you will get uh, an email with a link to, um, to the recording so you can rewatch uh, or watch uh, the, the webinar again. Um, obviously, you will get a PDF copy of the presentation. Um, so basically, it will work like uh, like I just explained. You have uh, under the event board, you have a tab where you can find downloadable files, uh, and I will store the each uh, presentation for for each webinar over there, so you can download it. Um, there are some. Not a lot, but um, there are some of the topics that we are going to discuss with some simple calculations. Um, if there are any spreadsheets involved or other things like uh, pictures, we are going to do some infrared picture analysis of tires uh, during one of the webinars. So uh, all files that you need for the webinar uh, or to go through the examples on your own, uh, they will be downloadable. So everything will be provided. Uh, and one thing that I will also provide is a document with uh, the syntax for mod channels that we are going to cover um, for your data acquisition system. I will provide the syntax for more, most of the popular data acquisition software packages so that if you want to start working with them, then you can just copy and paste um, these into your analysis software and you can, uh, you can start uh, analyzing. So five weeks, um, and these are the, the topics that we are going to, to go through. So I'll go in a minute, I will, we will go through the details of every, of every single one of the, of the modules. Um, the first one, we are going to talk about driving lines uh, with, with data. So we're going to see how we can determine driving lines uh, from the data, not only uh, determining the driving line, but also saying something about the quality of the driving line and which driving line should be uh, should be applied. Um, the second one, the week after, we will uh, start talking about uh, how to look at grip levels and car balance using our our data with some simple calculations. 
uh, where you don't need any sophisticated sensors for what uh, what 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 you, what you can do with uh, uh, quite basic uh, sensors on the car. The third week we are going to talk about the racing tire theoretical part, uh, and then in the last week there's a second part where we are more going to discuss about the practical side of working with tires how to set tire pressures, how to look at tire-related data like TPMS data and infrared sensor data. Um, and in the fourth webinar, we are going to talk about lateral load transfer. This is, I will come back to this later, uh, but basically this is what we use with 90% of our setup uh, changes on a race car to influence the balance of the car. Um, I will come back to the details of each uh, webinar uh, in a minute um, the audience the audience which i target with this um with this uh, webinar uh, basically obviously we are looking at race data and performance engineers currently working in motor racing but also drivers uh driver coaches um, obviously engineering students uh wishing to get into motor racing um and i jump on the uh e-racing train as well so um for sure everything which is uh, which we are working with on a real race car we can also apply that to the virtual uh world so um especially when we are talking about uh driving lines if we are talking about um uh how to uh handle a tire how a tire works basically we can apply this also to uh to virtual racing so also, people that are into this uh, will have some some information on, on uh, from these webinars. Um, so we go into a little bit more detail for each uh, webinar to see what we are going to discuss. Uh, the first one: analyzing driving lines with uh, data. Um, very often, it's there's more potential in working on your driving lines uh, than working on a car setup. A uh, car setup can typically gain you a couple of tenths on a, uh, on a lap, but that's maximum. For me, people are talking about, yeah, we won uh, half a second by changing uh, the springs on the race car. I think there are some other things which have an influence on uh, this half second, not the, not the spring rate. I don't believe in this, uh, but you can, win easily uh, half a second by looking at your driving lines and um, so this is an important uh, topic for data acquisition engineer for a driver for race engineer <clears throat> you need to be able to figure out where uh, to to gain this time um, that's why i chose this as the first uh, subject um, because it's also not an easy subject um, we have tools available like GPS and, uh, and video, uh, and we can use the data to calculate uh, mod channels like driving line or curvature. But um, even with those three combined, it's not that easy to, to really say, okay, this is the driving line and this is the correct driving line. So we are going to look at some techniques that, that you can apply to your data to, uh, to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> we are not only going to talk about how to uh, determine the line that a driver is taking, but we're also going to talk about <clears throat> um, if it's the correct line and what would be the better line to a, to a corner. <clears throat> so um, the topics that we are going to talk about during this webinar is um, First of all, we have three methods to evaluate driving line. First of all, a mathematical, mathematical approximation with corner radius or curvature. We have GPS and we have video. Um, we are going to look at each one separately, but also all the three combined. So we are going to, to, to discuss different examples uh, to give you a good picture of um, yeah, what's, what's going on and what kind of information you can get from them. <clears throat> So we are going to talk about the mod channel, the corner radius, how you, um, how you interpret this, this channel and what the advantages and disadvantages are. Um, we are going to see how we can determine with our data the, um, the location of the apex in a corner. 
Um, and just ready to give you a teaser, you cannot. Uh, we can only give an approximate uh, indication of, of if it's an early mid corner or late apex, but we cannot really say on the centimeter, okay, this is where our apex uh, is located. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, that uh, looking at this type of data is useless. We have some some interesting techniques available to 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 show you what's going on. Um, we are going to talk about the vehicle heading versus the uh, car rotation, uh, the angle in or the direction in which um, the car is traveling is not necessarily the direction in which our car is pointing. So uh, in a rallycross example, for, ex for example, you, you can have the situation or you very often have the situation that um, yeah, the driver is looking uh, towards the direction the car is traveling in through the side window. So there are two, th th these are two different things. Um, and yeah, there's a car balance effect um, that we need to take into account. Um, then obviously we want to know uh, if we are driving the correct driving line. And there as well, we have some, some methods to look at data in a specific way. Uh, to, to determine if the line that we are taking is the correct one. Uh, we are going to see some examples comparing different drivers, comparing different driving lines. And um, to finalize this webinar, we are going to see how to calculate uh, what I call the apex ratio um, and how we can use this to determine the correct driving line. Uh, people that have attended my uh, data acquisition seminars, uh, they know I'm a big fan of statistics uh, to point you in a certain direction uh, when it comes to looking at data. Um, and this is one of those examples where we are going to calculate some very simple statistics. Uh, we are going to collect a lot of data. And from that data collection, we are then going to establish, okay, what is the uh, correct uh, driving line? So that's the first, uh, the first webinar. Then uh, the second one, we are going to look at, uh, so the second one is analyzing grip level and car balance using uh, the data from the data acquisition system. Um, here we are going to, I'm going to give you um, a calculation method where, with which we can, again, big fan of statistics, with which we can calculate some very simple metrics and uh, you don't, like I said before, you don't need any sophisticated uh, sensors um, to do these calculations. Um, you only need some acceler accelerometers, some speed sensors, um, and for balance, obviously, we need a steering angle uh, signal. Um, and then we are going to discuss how, with these statistics, uh, how we can use these for a very big amount of analysis tasks. So we can tell with this. Uh, metrics, we can tell something about um, what is the effect of a setup change, uh, what is, uh, we can tell something about driving style, tire pressures, uh, temperatures, we can check, we can track um, the track conditions over a race event or a test day or test week, for example. Um, so there's a, a lot of things that we can do with these very simple metrics, and we are going to see a lot of examples of those. Um, the topic list, so we start with the basics, obviously, we are going to talk about the friction circle uh, and what this friction circle implies. Um, from this, we are going to create a mod channel for our combined or total acceleration, or some people call it G-sum, uh, there are different names for it. Um, and from this mod channel, we are then going to uh, we are going to look at this mod channel in very specific conditions around the track uh, where the car is grip limited. So cornering, obviously, but also braking, trail braking, uh, the traction phase. We can look at uh, corner entry, mid corner and corner exit. We can um, um, calculate them for, for low speed, medium speed, high speed. We have a lot of different options. To, to look at this combined acceleration channel. And this we are going to do with some metrics again. Um, and uh, yeah, and the next thing, 
as when we know how to calculate it, what are we going to use them for? What can we learn from them? Um, car balance, um, we are going to do the same thing. We are going to calculate some statistics, but first I will show you by just looking at basic data, um, how do you see over or understeer in the data? What are the pointers in the data um, that we need to look at? Um, then again, we are calculating uh, the understeer angle, which gives us a very uh, powerful metric to, to look at big amounts of data. Um, and we are going to see numerous examples of where we can use this, uh, this statistic for. Uh, and finally, we are going to um, also have a short look on how we can evaluate car balance when we are looking at the yaw rate sensor signal. So not uh, only the steering uh, angle, but when we also have a yaw rate sensor available, we are going to see what kind of extra information this, uh, this can provide us. Um, the third uh, module, uh, we are going to talk about the racing tire. So this is the uh, first part out of two, where we are going to um, uh, talk about tires. Um, basically, we have normally, uh, normally, I'd say uh, four tires on a car, um, and they are the only items, parts of the car, which are in direct con contact with the asphalt. So all the forces which are developed by acceleration, braking, cornering, uh, they are transmitted through these four surfaces which are in contact with, with the track surface. Um, on the other side, it's also the control interface for the driver. So the driver uh, gets from the four contact patches, gets information on what the car is doing. Uh, and he needs this in order to keep the car on, on the track. Um, so it's important that we understand what is going on at those four uh, contact patches. Um, so uh, this is what we are going to talk about in the first part of this uh, tire uh, um, uh, subject. Um, so uh, we are going to go through how a tire works uh, and how we influence or how the, how the tire influences the, the performance of the car. So that means we are going to speak a little bit about um, tire friction. Um, we are going to look at the, uh, the interface between the asphalt and the tire. Um, obviously, when we are talking about tires, we need to talk about tire slip angles and slip ratios. So we're going to uh, discuss how this works. And from that, we can then derive how a car goes through a corner. Um, next topic is the load sensitivity of the tire. Here we are going to talk about why we need, for example, downforce uh, on, a, on a race car. Um, what the effect of that will be. And also it's already like a short intro introduction. Um, on the next uh, webinar, where we are going to talk about lateral load transfer. Uh, and this is lateral load transfer. Basically what we are influencing uh, or what we are working with is the load sensitivity of the tire. So we are going to introduce this subject uh, in this webinar, but then on the next one, we are going to dig a little bit deeper uh, into it. Uh, we can have some issues with tires, obviously. Uh, we are going to look at some troubleshooting uh, procedures. Uh, how to look at uh, wear patterns from a tire. Uh, and we are going to talk about two main problems, which are graining and blistering of the tire. We're going to discuss where this is coming from, what, what, is, the, what, what is causing it, and um, if there are any possible solutions to it. And finally, uh, we don't have always nice and sunny, dry conditions, but we also have, especially in uh, yeah, the uh, part of the world where I'm living in. We often have some uh, races or events where the weather is not so nice. So we also use wet tires from, from time to time. This is a uh, slightly different uh, topic than a slick. So we are going to discuss this uh, separately. So basically the first part on tires is it's uh, theory. Um, and the next one uh, in the last week, we are going to go more uh, into the practical side.
Um, module four is about lateral load transfer and um, this topic, um, it's like, uh, it's, a, um, it's a special one because I've um, integrated this uh, in the very early data acquisition seminars, I started talking about this. Um, and most of the time I was, I was doing this in the second day when everybody already covered the basis and then you could go a little bit deeper, I thought. But uh, what I noticed very often was that when I started to talk about this, uh, I started to lose the, the people's attention. This is a, uh, apparently not so... Um, exciting topic to to talk about um you see uh, we are going to go through some basic mathematics uh, in this one um but i've been working now in motor racing for um, for more than 20 years and um i think i've been working on some uh, quite high level championships but i'm very surprised to still meet a lot of people where with a little bit of fishing, you find out that they don't understand how this works. Uh, high level race engineers um, that are not able to, to, to explain you properly what's, what's going on with, uh, with this topic. So uh, yeah, that's why I think it's, uh, it could be interesting to spend at least um, a webinar on it uh, and talk about, uh, about it for two, uh, two hours. Um, basically, um, when we do a setup change on the car, uh, like changing the spring rate or empty roll bar, dampers, uh, pump rubbers, tire pressures, uh, even if we change, uh, the stiffness of the chassis, for example, um, we change how we distribute the total amount of lateral load transfer on the front and rear axle of the car. And this principle we are using to change the balance of the car. This is how we play uh, with the grip we have available from our tires to, to shift grip from one axle to the other. So we can fight against understeer or oversteer, whatever is the, is the problem with the car. Um, so the topics that we are going to discuss in this one, uh, again, we, are, we have to discuss uh, the the basic principle on what this is based, the load sensitivity of the tire. Um, we are going to discuss about lateral load transfer. Um, and then, and this is the important one, how we distribute this on front and rear axle. Um, roll stiffness and roll stiffness distribution obviously have uh, quite an impact on, uh, on this. Uh, so this is also something that we need to uh, talk about and we are going to see how to look at data uh, and find out what your roll stiffness and your roll stiffness distribution is. Um, then we are going to check how this with how and how far we can um, um, affect the balance of our car. Um, we are going to discuss some examples. Um, we are going to go over specific setup changes. Uh, and see how they influence uh, our lateral load transfer distribution. Um, and then finally, we can measure, basically, we can measure lateral load uh, transfer uh, distribution with uh, suspension load cells, but it's not a complete picture. Um, we are not measuring everything, and there are some things that we need to take into account when we are uh, doing this. So this we are going to discuss uh, at the end of this webinar. So that's the fourth one. And then we have only one left, which is part two about, about our racing tire. Um, like I said already, here we are going to look at the practical side of uh, working with tires. Um, first of all, we are going to look at how to take measurements on the tires. We are going to take, uh, we are going to discuss tire pressure measurement, wear measurement, um, we are going to look at some infrared pictures uh, and see what that what kind of information we can get from that um, from the tire, um, and then we are going to look at how we can manage uh, our tires throughout the racing event. As you know, in most series, we are limited by the amount of tires that we are allowed to uh, to use. 
Um, and obviously there's also budget uh, questions. So uh, you have a limited amount of tires available to get through your race weekend. Um, and um, yeah, the exercise is obviously to, to use them as efficiently as possible and to extract maximum performance from them. So here we are going to talk about uh, how to set cold tire pressures, heating methods, um, uh, when to use which tires during a weekend, et cetera. Um, and then finally, we are going to look at uh, tire related data for acquisition system. And specifically, we are going to talk about what kind of um, information you can get from TPMS systems, tire pressure monitoring. Um, and secondly, uh, infrared tire temperature measurements on the car. Um, this is an interesting one because um, I'm a big fan of using these systems on a, on a race car. So um, uh, there's a lot of information that we can get from them. Um, the topics list for this webinar. So like I said, we are going to discuss uh, pit lane measurements, first of all. So to, how to measure properly pressure and temperatures. We are going to talk about the thermal photography. Um, durometer measurements and wear measurement. Uh, then we are going to discuss TPMS systems and infrared temperature sensors, what we can learn from them. Uh, and then finally, we are going to go over how to manage pressures and temperatures over a race, race event. Um, and finally, again, yeah, like I said, we sometimes have wet conditions as well. So yeah, the picture changes a little bit when we have to put rain tires on the car. So we are going to talk about tire pressures and how to set tire pressures for wet tires as well. So those are the 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 contents um, of, um, of of the webinars of the um, respective webinars. Um, then, yeah, uh, practical side how can you register uh, for those? Um, so yeah, after the technical problem we had before, uh, maybe the first point is uh, still uh, a question mark. Uh, let's, let's see um, if, uh, if we can get to the bottom of the problem. Um, but basically the idea is to give the, the webinars on the platform that you are using now. Um, so um, yeah, the, basically it will work exactly in the same way as, uh, as, as logging into the webinar uh, today. Um, the price for each webinar module is 75 euro. Um, you can pay by credit card. So uh, the, if you um, register for the for the webinar it's the same procedure uh, as when you registered for this introduction uh, with the only difference that when you uh, click on on uh, register on the registration button in the invitation uh, you will be um, uh, taken to a um, payment page where you can pay uh, this by by credit card um, if you wish to attend more than one webinar um, it, you, sh you still should register for each one separately. Uh, this has to do with the platform that I'm uh, that I'm using. Um, so uh, unfortunately, uh, it would be an administrative mess if uh, there were different packages. If you could do uh, uh, one, two, or three, uh, or five um, um, webinars, webinar registrations at once. So. Unfortunately, this one doesn't doesn't really uh, give me a practical way of doing this. So you should register for each uh, each one separately if you want to do more than one. Um, uh, for everybody that will attend the first four modules, um, I provide the fifth one free of charge. So this is my way of giving a, a, a small discount. Um, if you uh, follow the first four modules, then you will be able to log into the fifth one uh, without uh, the payment. Um, make sure that uh, you register in time because um, yeah, I'm, there's not a fixed number yet on how many people uh, will be 
um, it will be possible to to follow the the webinar i have to decide on this uh, uh in the next couple of days um but also to keep it practical and to to be able to answer all all questions uh i will limit the the amount of part participants so that yeah, for you this means that if you want to be sure of your uh place in the webinar um you have to register uh in time um So this is basically the, the calendar. Um, so like I said in the beginning of the presentation, the first one will be given uh, the 6th of May uh, at seven o'clock Euro European time. Um, and then it will be a, a weekly series. Every Wednesday evening, same time, uh, we'll, we'll, I will present the next module. Um, I try to choose a European time to fit yeah, a human uh, time frame for the rest of the world. Uh, obviously, yeah, when we go to Asia or Australia, it gets difficult. And yeah, uh, I cannot, unfortunately, I cannot uh, yeah, uh, have a good one for, for, for everybody. Um, so yeah, this is, I chose seven o'clock in the evening to, uh, yeah, to have a, a nice average. Um, like I said, in the beginning, if you are not able to be present live during the webinar, um, directly after the, the, the live webinar, uh, you will have access to, um, to the video recording, um, of the presentation. Um, and you will still be able to, to download the, uh, the, the PDF uh, of the presentation. So you, you have exactly the same uh, information and exactly the same uh, material as um, somebody that um, attends live. Um, the only disadvantage you have is that you will not be able to, um, to ask questions uh, live. So that's the only, uh, the only disadvantage. Um, So the registration procedure, uh, as I said before, it will be very similar to uh, what you did to register for this uh, introduction. Um, and um, I will communicate it very soon. And with very soon, I mean, preferably tomorrow, uh, I will um, put the registration procedure for the, for the first modules uh, online. So uh, yeah, you can watch, uh, these sites, uh, my my uh, personal web uh, web page or my Facebook or LinkedIn profile, um, you will be able to to find back all the information there. Uh, and everybody that registered uh, for this uh, introduction will also get automatically an email with uh, the registrations for the for the next uh, next sessions. So, um, yeah, that was that was it. Uh, for my introduction. Um, I hope everybody was able to, to follow, um, to follow most of it. Um, and we didn't lose too much, uh, information when, when the site went down. Um, I have some questions that I will try to, because there are quite a bit of them. I will, um, there's one question here from Peter that is asking uh, how long the webinar will be available um, uh, after the live session. Um, this will probably be, um, I have enough recording space available normally to, uh, to, to, to store all five uh, of the, of the, of the modules. So I can keep, everything online for at least that time and and probably also later um, but you will also be able to to download the complete recording um, so this is also possible um, so you can then store it locally and then you you can watch it whenever you uh, whenever you want um, other questions uh, yeah, is there 
is there any cost? Uh, I discussed this. This uh, is 75 euro uh, per module with uh, yeah, the option that if you follow all, four, uh, all five of them, that the fifth one will be, uh, will be free. Um, there are some questions which were uh, done in Portuguese. I, I'm so, I, I will have to translate them later. Um, Connor is asking, can much of this be done using the free, using free software, Excel, et cetera? Um, if not, what software should I look into? Um, basically, there will not be any special software required to, to follow these, these webinars. There's only, when we are talking about um, uh, the tire in the, last, uh, in the last webinar, we are going to go through some uh, infrared pictures. Um, you will not have to do this during the webinar, but I will provide you some links where you can download um, some uh, small software package to open infrared uh, pictures and to to uh, to modify them and to manipulate them. Um, but for the rest, um, you don't need anything. If you have um, um, if you have Excel, uh, basically you are safe, and all the uh, topics that we are going to discuss concerning data and data analysis. Yeah, you can do that basically with the system that you are using. I, I will not focus on one specific system like MoTeC or PI. Um, I should say Cosworth. Um, so um, the, the, the information that's going to be discussed will be general enough so that you can apply it to any uh, data acquisition package that, that you might be using. Um, the other questions, um, yes, so the, the webinar videos will be downloadable too, and the same goes for the, for the presentation and all the other files which are, uh, involved. Um, and the last one is, uh, an interesting one, how much of the webinar, um, contents i assume is covered already in your book um for sure there will be some some things that you will uh recognize back uh from from the book um but i apply here the same principle that i use when i do the classroom uh seminars that um the book is one thing uh, but uh the webinars or the seminars should give you something extra um, so basically the theory is going to be, yeah, you will be able to find that back in my book as well. Um, but we are going to try, uh, and go a little bit deeper and discuss more, uh, more examples of it. So it's not completely the, the same. Um, practical question when making the, the payment, uh, you will, uh, automatically receive, uh, um, you will receive a, a confirmation of the payment. Um, it's not an official invoice. For people that need an invoice, they can always send me an email and I will uh, produce them then manually. Um, another question is that, um, is there a certificate? Um, there also, uh, I can confirm that you will receive, uh, after each module, actually, you will receive uh, a, a cert certificate uh, that you took part in this, uh, in, in each respective webinar. Um, and final question, repeat the name of your book, please. Uh, the book is called uh, Analysis Techniques for Race Car Data Acquisition. Acquisition. It's a long title. Um, you can find, uh, I think, still the most efficient way to buy it online is through the uh, SAE website, which is, uh, I can see if I can type it in the chat. So it's... Um, SAE.org. Ah, somebody already uh, copied in the complete link. So thank you, Peter. 
Um, so there, I think this is still the most efficient way to, uh, to buy it. Uh, you can also find it back on Amazon and uh, similar websites, but very often the price is not, uh, not the same. Uh, and with that, I mean, it's a little bit more expensive. So, uh, just be careful to check when you buy it somewhere else that, uh, yeah, that the price, the, the price on, um, the SAE website is the correct, uh, the correct one. So uh, I think that's that's it from uh, the question side. There was a, a, a longer question about, uh, which is, goes already into the um, uh, the topics of our webinar. So I will I, I will come back to this. I, I will not uh, forget about this one, but I will um, uh, I will cover this uh, question later on. So. Um, that's it from my side. Um, so I hope I was able to convince you uh, to uh, to start subscribing for this uh, for these webinars. Um, um, ah, there's one more question coming in, which might be interesting to to answer uh, from Wim. Uh, if there are too many people doing the webinars, if I make a second uh, series, um, well, this is for sure something I can consider at the moment. I'm not really busy with uh, with work, so uh, that's for short time to do a, to do a second series. Good. Um, then uh, that being said, I um, I will leave it with that. I uh, hope uh, I was able to provide you all the info that that you need. Um, if there is um, anything left please send me an email. I, uh, if, if, if you have any doubts or any questions left after this presentation, um, just, just send me, a, uh, just send me a, a quick email and I will, I will answer it, uh, as quick as possible there again. It's not that busy at, at this time. So, um, um, I will be able to reply quickly. Good. Thank you uh, for joining me. Um, for people that want to download the presentation, uh, when I close the webinar room, I'm not sure if it's uh, if if you can still access it. So maybe this is a good time to uh, to to download it uh, to your computer. Uh, anyway, if you miss it, uh, just again there as well. Send me an email uh, if you miss something, um, and I will I will send it to you as quickly as possible. So have a very good. Uh, morning, midday or uh, afternoon or evening. Um, and I hope to see you uh, the 6th of May for the for the first uh, first official webinar. Thanks and bye.